podcast episode 26. Uh, first off, something that's been going on for a few days now, and it'll eventually taper off, it always does, criticism and everything. Um, LeBron James, Charles Barkley, their little feud that happened. Uh, the reason I agree with LeBron in some of this is, Charles, when you talk about not being competitive and whiny and a punk and stuff for years and stuff like that, if you're kind of taking a shot as him as a person and what, what he thinks and who he is as a person. So, with that being said, I don't necessarily agree or disagree with what LeBron did. I don't think it was over the line, though. I mean, both those are grown men. They can do what they want. Um, the, only, the only point I want to make is him taking a shot at LeBron for needing help. Now, one, Charles Barkley changed teams to get help and try to win a championship. He was a championship chaser himself. So, with that said, LeBron didn't ask for a superstar, necessarily. He asked for a playmaking point guard, which they do need, because who do they have? They got Kay Felder as a backup. Shump can play it, but that his strong suit's not creating for other players. His strong suit's, he can bring the ball up and he can play defense, but he can't create, necessarily, for other players. So, to me, Kay Felder could grow into that role because he's, he's a good player. He's a good player. Don't get me wrong. But he's just looking for a little help on the uh, backup point guard. And like Shaq says, the others. That's that's who wins championships. Cause you can be a superstar and you're going to put your numbers up but the others have to help some. Um, Kyrie's passing a lot better though. So that's a good sign to see as far as that goes. Uh, but if you look at it on paper... The Warriors have four All-Stars compared to the Cavs three. So if you just base it on that, not counting Love's injury right now, not counting Smith's injury, which is big for him too, it's still on paper three All-Stars and four All-Stars. So even if he wanted another All-Star, just so he compete, can get to the finals, if he can get to the finals, so he can compete with the Warriors on paper technically. Because if you look at it, the Warriors have two of the top five players in the league right now, which most people consider two of the top five. And then the Cavs have a top five player, maybe a top ten, and then maybe a top 20, 25 player, whatever. Look, he's a little lower, probably top 20. Uh, but then if you're the Warriors, you might have – you got two in the top five, you may have three in the top ten, and then you probably have one in the top twenty. Uh, especially all around player Green, he's he's very high if you just take all around talent what he does for the team. Uh, so that's the only thing I had a problem with. They're few they're grown men. They can go back and forth all they want to. Uh, but that's the only thing I think was taken out the wrong way from a lot of people and a lot of media was him just basically saying, okay, we need to back up point guard. He said it in a way you probably should have toned it down some, but it still had the same effect because now they're looking for backup point guard or a player who can come in and help. Uh, so that's, that's the end of that. We'll go to the next topic. Um, earlier in the week, when they, or maybe last week, when they said he was going to start competing more and uh, basically getting back on a regular schedule in PGA. Uh, it's crazy though now that he got re-injured or necessarily they didn't call it an injury they said it wasn't to do with his nerves uh, the pinched nerve in his back but it's still a back spasm it's what's gave him problems for a long time. It's just sad to see a guy who used to be so good you know he hit his cut off point and never won again basically. I mean he struggled for years now, but I thought maybe this time off was going to give him some rejuvenation, his body heal up, everything between his like his legs, his back, and all that would heal up. Uh, it didn't work out like that, um, but this is just one withdrawal. We'll see what happens and comes from it, but he might have a look at his back, and uh, but he wasn't going to make the cut for the second straight week anyway, probably. Uh, and it's pretty crazy because that all-star basically event that he had at his course, he, he done well. He done really well. And uh, so 
that's the problem with Tiger Woods coming back now, and maybe this will be the last straw. He might not be able to do it anymore. And but it's golf so much more exciting with him in there. He, he just makes the sport more exciting to me. I I watch it. And I turn it on. And I know the ratings used to be a lot higher when he was playing. It just he just made it more exciting. But this is also the seventh time he withdrawn from a tournament since 2002 or since 2010. So that's that's quite a bit, especially since he hadn't played. He took a whole year off there, pretty much. So yeah, I, I hope Tiger comes back, and I hope he can win a couple tournaments. And I'd like to see him win majors because um, he was one of the more exciting golfers, and we always thought you know he was going to pass Jack Nicholson, Jack Nicholson. Or Jack Nichols, uh, and he just didn't. Uh, I don't think he will now. It doesn't look good. So with that being said, uh, let's move on to our next topic. But I, I wish the best for Tiger Woods, and I wish the best for golf to get him back to a decent level. He's still only forty, so this Art Brow situation looks like a mess. Basically, I don't think he'll ever get a chance again and I kind of don't see why it would. Um, uh, the latest news that came out showed that legal documentation showed Bryles and his staff kept misbehavior under wraps. Um, I mean I can see a way to do that but once you start piling up and they start getting these rape charges and um, these sexual assault charges and just everything keeps piling up you can't do that. It's just that's just not right. And then again, you you shouldn't condone that in your program. I mean, it keeps coming out more and more stuff over time. And to me, I, I don't know if he'll ever get a coaching job again. He may down the line. He may also go to jail or something for this. I mean, this is this is a pretty big deal. Um, obviously, he's a pretty good coach overall. And without the legal trouble, he probably wouldn't have been fired. And even when he got fired, if it was just a little blip, somebody else would have definitely hired him. Without hearing all this trouble and stuff, somebody else would have definitely hired him because he's that good a coach. Uh, but he he tried to hide stuff. He tried to get other people to hide stuff, apparently, from the sounds of it. So uh, he shouldn't get another job ever. But I do believe in second chances. But this is a pretty big offense to me. Uh, you try to hide stuff like that in your program, that makes your program look bad, and you're kind of the main guy, along with your assistants, who've done it. So, for me, I can't see him coaching again, but he might eventually. And bigger than that, Baylor's in. I mean, the Baylor problem keeps getting bigger and bigger and sound worse and worse. State Warriors have started to ball out. Really, Steph Curry and Kevin Durant have kind of both found their groove. Curry's where he was last year, and just hitting shots from everywhere, finding his groove, putting up big numbers. And to me, the Golden State Warriors are actually more exciting like that. Um, I enjoy watching them more. I'm a big Steph Curry fan, but it seems like they go as he goes. When he hits a big shot, it kind of pumps up the crowd, pumps up the team. But with them playing well, Clay Thompson's doing what he does, shoots, scores, all-star team, Draymond, all-star team, and Draymond got it, and his numbers aren't excellent, but he's a defender, rebounder, points, assists, um, so he, he does it all for them, and that's what, uh, that's what they need from him. To me, this team's constructed to win for many years if they can keep the pieces together with the money they have. Um, I mean, right now they're a little bit off the pace from last year, but they, they could still get to 70 wins. And you never know what can happen in the finals. You never know if they'll get there. Spurs team's pretty tough. Rockets team has a good score player. Um, if the Cavs get there, which everybody's wanting to see and hoping, uh, LeBron James on that uh, is on the other side of that court, so it doesn't mean they're a shoe in to win, but they're definitely the best team on paper and the best team playing right now. Best team record-wise, best team roster-wise, best team uh, 
all stars wise, best team start lineup wise. So there's no doubt they're the best team, but it's not a guarantee you win. They won a record got many games last year, um, and they ended up losing in the finals. But right now the way they're playing, they're playing at a very high level, and it doesn't look like they can be stopped. Uh, you got two of the top five players in the league on that team, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, right now they found their group. Get traded. That's the that's the big question here. Will it be a Nick Clipper Cap? Right now, that's all you hear about in play. Usually, there's a surprise team out there. Uh, I'm surprised the Celtics didn't want them. Just uh, add a star with Thomas. If you didn't have to give up Brown, probably and maybe Bradley or something, I don't know. But if you could have worked it out. Right now, it looks like they're going to try to sell low. So if they sell low, the Clippers and Cavs are in play, and we'll see what happens. If the Cavs get him, to me, they work him in. They got about two months to work him in until the playoffs. They get him in there, work him in, and maybe get to the finals. And Then the, then the matchup on paper is pretty even. You have Anthony, if they keep love, you have Anthony Love, Irving, James against Durant, Green, Thompson, and Curry. If they all can mesh together on the team, it looks like the words are doing it. If the Cavs can mesh them together, which the Cavs could, man, that would be that would be one of the best championships, the finals. So I don't see it. it's going to be possible. The Cavs don't have much to give up unless you throw out Thompson which would be difficult because he does a lot for your team. Um, Shumpert could go, obviously. You'd have to get a third team involved, but Shumpert could go. Kay Felder, McCray, guys like that could definitely go. Um, I think they want to keep Fry if they could. So if they had to, maybe Thompson could go because they could keep Fry in the shooter, which is actually more beneficial. Um, but, yeah, I mean, and you could possibly trade Smith, but I don't know. He's injured. I don't know if they'd want to do that. And if they kept Smith, too, if they trade all those guys, throw in some picks, you never know what could happen. I don't know where he's going to go. I'd say there's a surprise team out there. I don't know who it is right now. But if he goes somewhere, and the Clippers, the Clippers are a pretty good destination. Especially, they would match up pretty well if Paul comes back, DeAndre Jordan, um, Griffin, and then you have Carmelo playing your small forward. You have JJ Redick at your shooting guard. That's that's a pretty legit lineup itself. So, and that would give them that would give the Warriors some problems if they can get him incorporated and everything. So it'll be interesting to see. He may not get traded. He may stay there. But I think they should trade him. I think Noah and Rose both need to go somewhere eventually too. Maybe keep Rose, but. Because you need to just start building around Porzingis, start fresh. It's not like the East is super tough, so you can get a few pieces and you can be competing again already. Um, so it'll be interesting where Carmelo goes. I like to see him. I'd like to see him go to the Cavs or the Clippers to make the Warriors make it harder for the Warriors if the Cavs get there. But in the West, it would make it harder if the Clippers got him. And I'd like to even see that. So my video end I've got uh, screenshots of my blog right now uh, for WWE fans there's a great $5 off 35 plus there's another one $10 off I think 70 code so you go to that if you're a WWE fan you want some merchandise uh, also just a screenshot of what my blog looks like when you first get into it uh, there's a bunch of articles on there my podcast and everything uh, then I got links to a bunch of projects I'm working on and you can also play my podcast on the site or go to Google Music or iTunes um, you can also click on the link to go to podcast that'll take you to SoundCloud uh, there's an ebook that is the GOAT, the GOAT Sports Blog Year in Review 2016 a paperback book that's the same thing um, it's like hard copies basically uh, and then there's a Facebook page. There's a uh, 
two two gigs two services I provide to anybody that's interested a fancy sports service and a coaching service I'll help you with fancy sports I also help you with some coaching things I can watch your videos I can I can get you some plays I got some plays drawn up that are really good uh, I'm gonna work on a couple other books and things in the future um, I, I got varsity views that's a site out there. If you've never been to it, check it out. I got some stuff posted on there. Um, and then I got a Sports Pinterest. The Sports Pinterest basically has all my posts I put on there. But I also got some other sports posts on there. Uh, so check it out. This is my first video. I hope y'all like it. Uh, I'm just going to get started with the videos here. I'm going to eventually do some more. But this is just a podcast and a blog my podcast on a video form so uh, check this out and